Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Paranjay Guha Thakurta. We continue this series of conversations with independent analyst Himendra Hazari. The first series had we discussed the ICICI Bank, the ILNFS non-banking financial company. We looked at Kotak Mahindra Bank. Thereafter, we looked at Yes Bank. And in this series of conversations, we've already had a look at HDFC and the ILNFS Group, as well as Axis Bank, formerly UTI Bank, set up by the Unit Trust of India. We're going to do a follow-up to what has happened at Yes Bank and whether, to use Mr. Hazari's words, Yes Bank's new CEO should not be a yes man. Give us a little bit of the background, Mr. Hazari. I mean, tell us a little bit. You talked about this great Shakespearean drama that played out uh, because of Mr. Rana Kapoor and now that Mr. Rana Kapoor stepped down as the CEO and the founder of the bank uh, at the end of January. And with effect from the 1st of March, we have Yes Bank with a new chief executive officer, Mr. Ravneet Gill. So give us a little bit of background and then tell us why Mr. Gill, the new head of Yes Bank, should not be a Yes Man. See, the whole problem and the issue with Yes Bank was that uh, there was a crisis of leadership. The Reserve Bank of India did not consider fit Mr. Rana Kapoor fit and proper for him to continue with a fresh term as the CEO. Now, in all promoter-driven enterprises, the, you know, the CEO plays a very important role if he's the promoter. And naturally, if he's been asked to step down by the regulator, it creates a crisis <coughs> for everybody concerned because these are all single individual-driven enterprises. Now, what happened in Yes was not only did the RBI tell him to step down, but the board subsequently, you know, they removed their head of their audit committee, uh, the head, an independent director, he stepped down probably taking, you know, they held him accountable for, again, two successive years of misreported accounts. Then you had another independent director who had been appointed early of 2018 who resigned, and on his in his resignation letter, he said he was dissatisfied with what he was seeing in Yes Bank. Who are you talking about? This is, I think, Mr. Chandra Shekhar, of who was the earlier now, IT. Now you have new persons. There. Now you have new persons. Mr. There. Maheshwar Sahu is a former bureaucrat, Mr. Anil Jagya, formerly from the HDFC Bank. And uh, these are the two independent directors. And Mr. Ashish Agarwal, uh, the chief risk officer, is also, um, he's the executive director. But I, um, yeah, please, please, please so continue the, con so the story. So the concern yeah. was that, you know, the leadership which the, which the markets, the banks own, middle management, everything was comfortable with all being removed. And therefore, who would take over? And plus, there was this promoter struggle also going on between Rana Kapoor and... And a section of his family. And a section of, of the other promoter, <coughs> Mr. Ashok Kapoor's uh, family. So that also, all these, plus you have the RBI who was very clearly dissatisfied with all that was going on. And in this context, you know, the market was awaiting that, who will this new leader be? And the markets bounced. Uh, exactly. The shares of Yes Bank bounced uh, when news came that Mr. Gill, uh, Ravneet Gill, was going to be appointed as the bank CEO for a three-year period starting the 1st of March. Exactly, because I had also argued that in such a case, you require a CEO from outside who's also a hardcore commercial banker. And in this selection, it appears that both these conditions, which I believe you know, should have been there in, a, in the future CEO, have been met. And therefore, I think even the market thought that this will now be, you know, the, the previous chapters closed and this new chapter will begin of Yes Bank. Mr. Hazadi, I'd like you to talk a little bit about why you believe Yes Bank is in the crosshairs of the Reserve Bank of India. And uh, on the 13th of February, the bank issued a press note saying that the Reserve Bank of India's risk assessment report for the year 31st March 2018 showed that there were no divergence in terms of the bank's profits, the net profits, the quality of its assets were in full conformity with the norms of 
the Reserve Bank of India, which was unlike what had happened in 2016, 15, 16 financial year and 16, 17, the financial year. Now, you yourself have pointed out that in 17, 18, there were two corporate accounts, Reliance and Naval, headed by Mr. Anil Ambani and Matic's Fertilizers that were shown as being standard, whereas most banks that had exposure to these same companies classified their accounts and their assets as non-performing. I'd like you to explain what you mean. See, what I detected in FY 2018 was that these two, which of its Reliance Naval was a, was a 450 crore exposure round of Yes Bank. It had classified the account as performing while practically all the banks in the Reliance Naval Consortium had classified that account as non-performing. Therefore, there, in my opinion, there was very high probability that when the RBI did its inspection, that they would also classify this account as non-performing. And similarly with Matix, although Matix exposure was very small. Therefore, in my opinion, I thought the probability was higher that in FY18 as well, it would qualify for this divergence, which means that you can have more divergence than RBI, but has to be less than 15%. Suppose it's 14% divergence, it will not qualify for, for being disclosed as divergence. Okay. I'd like you to explain something in as simple a language you can. You're a financial analyst, you understand these things better. What are called the Reserve Bank of India's Risk Assessment Report, RAR. On the, 15, on the 13th of February, Yes Bank says, we've adhered to the RBI's norms. And then two days later, on the 15th of February, the same bank issues another note for the press and the media saying that the Reserve Bank of India was very, very upset, had hauled it up or pulled it up because they had publicly disclosed this risk assessment report which was meant to be a confidential document, a confidential report, and in violation of the guidelines of the Reserve Bank of India. Now, you have wondered why did the RBI admonish Yes Bank when they did not do the same thing when other banks, such as HDFC Bank, Axis Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, when they had also cited their risk assessment report to show that there was no divergence from what they disclose in their accounts with the norms stipulated and specified by the Reserve Bank of India. Kindly explain this issue. Okay. Now, this risk assessment report is a very, very comprehensive report. It not only discusses the whether the accounts are conforming with RBI norms, but it discusses a whole host of things. It goes into whether technology aspect you know, it even goes into, you know, succession planning. All this is encompassed. It's a very comprehensive report. And divergence is only one aspect of the report. Now, the entire report is marked private and confidential. However, market practice till this was that when there was no divergence, certain banks, and I mentioned those banks, not only did they only... HDFC Bank, Axis Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank. Right. Not only did they orally convey it, but it was actually disclosed in either the advertisement when the results come out or in the transcript with analysts. So and it was a, became public? It had become public. So therefore, I believe Axis Bank, and there was a concern in the market. I also had that concern that for FY 2018, you know, Yes Bank may again be, you know, come under divergence. So when this concern was there, and there was also a concern that Rana Kapoor did not get the extension, did not get his term renewed, because RBI may have found that again for the third year, this there is could the, have been this a is divergence. The, this is a presumption? A or, presumption. Or exactly. a speculation? Speculation. Although in my view, two years consecutively, no CEO should be able to continue, should be allowed to continue. So given this concern in the market, when they got this report, they decided to go public on it, otherwise, you know, it may have leaked uh, unofficially, and therefore they thought, uh, because they had seen what other banks were doing, they thought it was all right. Now, obviously, from the Reserve Bank of point of view, it was not all right. 
and they specifically admonished Yes Bank for, you know, specifically issuing a press release, okay. saying, while well, the other banks have never specifically issued a press release. Okay, so, all right. So, you are taking a somewhat nuanced view about what had happened. Tell me, earlier in our earlier conversation, you had talked about how uh, the HDFC Bank hadn't exactly been responding to your questions. Uh, I understand the Yes Bank uh, has been far more, what should I say, uh, uh, forthcoming in responding to analysts' queries, including yours. Uh, is that correct? No, that was a very pleasant surprise because in terms of Yes Bank, I've been far more critical and my reports have been far more frequent than as compared to HDFC, where they have just done about one report which could be critical. But I've noticed that with Yes Bank in particular, right from day one when I send them a questionnaire, they're extremely professional, extremely responsive. They'll come loaded with their data, with their version of the facts. And, you know, no threats, no disgruntlement. You know, it's like, this is our view, please consider it. And I think that's the way a professional organization uh, should be managed. And it speaks a lot about the institution which can accept <coughs> criticism. I think that's very yeah, important. I, I think that's the important point that you're driving at. Some organization, more than others, are more tolerant and receptive to criticism, which is, uh, we can agree or disagree how constructive or how destructive that criticism is. No, very true. I think it reflects on the maturity of the individuals and the maturity of the institution. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Hemendra Hazari, for giving us your views on Yes Bank. And time alone will tell whether it's new Chief Executive Officer Ravneet Gill will not just be a yes man, but is able to get Yes Bank out of the crosshairs of the regulator, the Reserve Bank of India. Keep watching NewsClick, you know, on this is the only portal, the only YouTube channel where you're going to get the kind of very, very critical and percep perceptive analysis and commentary on the working of private banks in India. Now, we conclude at this juncture, this conversation, but there'll be one more conversation with Mr. Hemendra Hazari, which looks at the bigger economic and political issue. Every now and then we hear the problem with India's banking sector is that we need to privatize the public sector banks. We need to consolidate public sector banks. Is that the way forward? Keep watching NewsClick and thank you for being with us on this conversation.